afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mariam Ahmed, current president of the Chicago Bar Association. Founded in 1874, the Chicago Bar Association is one of our nation's oldest and most active metropolitan bar associations with over 18,000 lawyers and judges as members. In addition to its focus of promoting the administration of justice and the public good, the Chicago Bar Association is committed to utilizing its resources to educate the public. It's that portion of our mission that brings us here today. Maria Pappas has held the position of Cook County Treasurer since 1998. She was elected to a sixth four-year term in November 2018. Cook County is one of the world's largest economies with 5.2 million people and the nation's third largest city, Chicago. The treasurer's office handles $18 billion a year, almost $13 billion in property taxes on some 1.8 million parcels of property. The property tax revenues then must be distributed to 2,200 local government agencies, such as municipalities, school districts, police and fire districts, library districts, and others that, that tax properties. It has to be done and it has to be done fast. When Pappas was a commissioner, the treasurer's office was the poster child of government inefficiency. The office had four working computers, six typewriters, and dozens of letter openers. Payment envelopes were slit open by hand and sums written in ledger books. That may explain the $30 million in checks sitting on the floor. Treasurer Pappas immediately obtained a bank lockbox to deposit not only the checks, but also future checks on the day they were received. In her first year, interest on deposits went from $4.8 million to almost $19 million. Treasurer Pappas says the treasurer's office she walked into in 1998 reminded her of some third world countries she had seen. Treasure Pappas established a website, cookcountytreasure.com, that averages 450,000 visits a month so taxpayers can live the paperless life, checking their payments, searching for refunds, seeking their exemptions, and more. Her debt disclosure ordinance of 2009 provides taxpayers an up-close view of the debts, operational and pension-related expenses of the government that taxes them. Information that goes also on the tax bills mailed to the taxpayers. Treasure Pappas is proud of this extraordinary exercise in data transparency saying taxpayers now can monitor their governments and taxes that they levy. Cook County is one of the nation's most diverse counties and Pappas's website addresses that diversity with brochures in print and on the website in languages such as Albanian, Arabic, Assyrian, Bulgarian, Chinese, Croatian, German, Greek, Hindi, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Lithuanian, Polish, Romanian, Russian, Serbian, Slovakian, Spanish, Thai, Ukrainian, Urdu, and English. An avid bicyclist, runner, and swimmer, Pappas has participated in some 100 rides, marathons, triathlons, and long distance rides for charity, 
She is also a skilled chef. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Treasure Pappas is going to begin by conducting a presentation, but I invite you to please enter any questions that you might have in the chat function found below in your settings. Um, at the end of her presentation, Treasure Pappas will answer your questions. So again, please continue to enter those questions. She's here to answer whatever questions you have. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our featured speaker, Cook County Treasurer, Maria Pappas. Thank you so much, Miriam. I mean, we've had a previous meeting and it was a very successful meeting because we have really hit it off. So we have today for all of you, a very special presentation that we put together just for CBA. I like Mary, I'm a previous attorney, so I have paid rent and I get what it is that attorneys have to do to like move it on quickly. So we probably won't be up for an hour because we know that you guys are on billable hours and those of you who've been invited to listen in have lots of things to do this afternoon. So I'll get started. I'm gonna give you a quick skinny on what the office does so that you don't have to come in here anymore. And then I'm gonna segue into a series of studies that we have dedicated to John McCormick and Bruce Dole, the ex-editors and managing editorial page editor of the Chicago Tribune. So here we go. So in 1998, we had 250 employees, six satellite offices. We are down to one office here in Cook County at the county building. And we are down to 52 full-time employees. At the time we came in here, we had no lockbox. We had three, we had six 386 computers, no website, no email system. And as Miriam said, we had $30 million worth of checks on the floor and one mail opening machine. So, okay. I decided that we needed to become paperless. If you get a chance and you have to come in here, which you should never have to come in here, again, after my presentation, what you will realize is that most of the filing cabinets are empty. In 98, we had two ways to pay. If you've got a bunch of clients who aren't on our TPA program, you can get on it. I have in the room with me, Kelly Carvalis, who is my chief legal counsel, and Anastasia. Who goes by lots of different names, Anastasia? Yes. Stefan, which she's recently married. I have my IT guy, Ramson, here. I have Jadico, who's my chief financial officer. My chiefs, um, David Myers, Bill Karuklis, Paul Kawa, my outreach gentleman, who is Manuel and Manny, all of whom will help you. But these are the ways that you can now pay. So we're going to take a look at these different ways. Look at this. We have a lockbox and we've had 11 million payments go to the lockbox. We bank ba branch payments at Chase. So we get lots of people who go to Chase. If you're a lawyer, we advise you not to do that. We're going to show you how to do it. These are community bank branches. This is like Chinatown, for example, where people want to go there. If you have a community bank that you want to add to our list, Call us 312-603-6202 and we will handle that request. So this concerns attorneys. This concerns attorneys. If you're a real estate attorney and you're handing Commonwealth Edison or any large client or anybody over 10, just have them give us the disc. They come in, they pay online, it's for free and you can see what's happening here. Third party agents or ACH payments, you can direct debit your account. But look at this. This is what's happening in the world of COVID and the world of getting people out of my office. We started with an online payment system of 16,000 people. We're up to 709,000. I would encourage you to go to cookcountytreasury.com. It's for free. What we're seeing is, look at this. 388,000 credit card payments. Look at this. If you ever get here, 118 North Clark, don't come here. They take your temperature. They ask you 5,000 questions. Look at this. We had 400,000 people. Those of you who are a little up in years will remember this line winding down the county building. And look at this. We are under 
28,000 a year walking in here. So if you're a law firm, you don't wanna come in here. We're gonna show you why in a little bit. Look at this, bank branch payments are on their way down and look what's up, internet and website. Internet, website, and third-party payments, that's the little green line. So this is a way that we have if your clients have a mortgage and they accidentally pay and the mortgage company pays. This is called the stop payment program. Whoever tries to come in and pay the second payment, we stop it. What we're finding is that this past summer, look at this, we stopped $52 million in payments that were coming in because of refinancing. So all of you out there who have clients who refinance, go to cookcountytreasure.com, You'll be able to see right away if there's a mistaken double payment, we get it back to you within four to six weeks. Don't come into the office. You can apply online. You can now track online when you're gonna get your check back. Don't call us, just go to cookcountytreasure.com. We've made this easy. Look at this. These are the call center activities, okay? Emails. We ask all attorneys and everyone to respond and, and, and send inquiries through emails. And incidentally, the, you don't have just anybody answering these emails. These are attorneys. These are attorneys answering these emails. So this, for those of you who are dealing in property tax systems, the electronic warrant book, you don't have to go here anymore, except for back years. But we are changing all of this the warrant books are now electronic. So we have an annual tax sale every year. It is done online. If you want to bid, we'll send you the info. And actually the info is on cookcountytreasure.com. You can come in, you can give us your disc, tell us what you want to bid on. And we've got a third party vendor that picks the winner. It is no longer an open cry auction like it used to be in the bottom of 69 West Washington. It was filthy and dirty. Look at this. This is the number of pins on the tax sale list, which has been indefinitely postponed. You may or may not have heard that I've started a program called Black Houses Matter. It's on WBON. Tune in on Monday, the first day of African American Heritage Month to hear me at 1130 on WBON. I'm really good. It's the most popular program on WBON. Look at why. We have 35,000 homes on this list. 16,000 of them are returned mail. And I'm going to show you later where this returned mail is coming from and how you can identify it if it's one of your clients. And of those people, 18,000 are missing or are under $1,000. Over here are some of the people who on this tax sale list are missing senior freeze and senior exemptions. We call this Black and Latino Houses Matter, Black Houses Matter, because 75% of the properties on this list are in African-American wards. So look at this, African-American wards, Carrie Austin, Stephanie Coleman, Bill Sawyer, look at these numbers and look at the lake front. Look here, Matt Martin has 37. There is a disparity between what happens in neighborhoods. Let's take a quick look at the suburbs. African-American suburbs, 4,600 in Harvey. And let's go down this list because there's 126 suburbs. And let's look at the last page of this. Well, look here. Moni has one. Marionette Park has one. Barrington has two. But 4,600 in Harvey. So what are we doing? This is Black Houses Matter. These are my cohorts on the first floor. This is Michael Lee and Maurice. If you get downstairs, I suggest that you don't. You can do all this online, but look at this, okay? Since March, we have given back 44 million in refunds to the African-American community and the Pappas Mobile, about to be equipped. We are hitting the streets. We are going out. We are going to go into the neighborhoods and help people who have exemptions or and on the tax sale list that don't answer their mail. Or, as you saw earlier, 18,000 returned mails. So this is our FOIA log. Gerald Winkle handles the FOIA log. You FOIA me, it goes up. 
there's your request form. We put all FOIA requests online. This is the genius of anything that I've ever done. This is cookcountytreasure.com. This is your property tax overview. Get to the little purple box. It is a treasure trove of information I have accumulated with all the wonderful people in this room and the, the IT staff who programmed all of this um, 20 years of data. So what are you going to find out on your property tax overview? Get this. In July, we had a million people. Wouldn't you die to have like a million people come to your website? And since 2020, in 2020, we had 7.3 million come. And since 04, we've got seven. Those are those people that used to be lined up outside the building and crawling to get in here. It's over. Look at this. You can get all of this information about any piece of property on your iPhone, your, your Android, your iPad. We've had... 4.3 million people pull it up on their iPhone. People actually sit over dinner and say, do you have an exemption? Go to cookcountytreasure.com. They put their neighbor's addresses in. They get money. They call. They're excited. Let's look at this next thing. Look at this. On cookcountytreasure.com in that purple box, you got to put in your address. Don't put in North, South, East, and West. We've, we're sitting on 76 million in refunds. That for lawyers and homeowners in commercial and vacant land. Going back 20 years on anything you've owned, these are double payments. You paid, the mortgage company paid, two mortgage companies paid, two financing companies paid. Get on cookcountytreasure.com, put in your address, and you're going to find out if you're one of the people who's double paid or is missing exemptions. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And you're going to see all this stuff about taxing district information that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit. How about that? 76 million visitors. Look at this. Our mobile visits. How about this? We are up in 108 foreign languages, 108 foreign languages. And believe it or not, these are our foreign language brochures. We're just revising them. There are four of them now. They're being consolidated to one. But look at this. Look at the diversity of this county. And these are just the brochure downloads. 9,000 Albanians, 19,000 Arabic. What does this mean? This means that you as the lawyer, if you're trying to explain this somebody, to somebody in English who speaks a second language, they're really not interested. Go to cookcountytreasure.com, download these brochures, and give them to your non-English speaking clients. And I say that this is a complicated system because what we're finding out is even when we work in English speaking communities, people don't wake up in the morning and say, hello, did I get an exemption? Because they don't know. Here's property tax overview. What are you gonna find? Put in your address and luckily there your house shows up. Lawyers, returned mail. You can punch here, here, and we'll change the address for you. How about that? Don't come to the office <laughs> right here for your clients. Now, on this property that you saw the picture of the house, and we do that for commercial and vacant lots, look at this. This person owes two grand. Question, can we help them? So this is part of the refund system. This person is owed $113. Why? Because in 2001, 04, and 07, they overpaid. Punch apply now, apply now, apply now. And we've got this deal set up with Salesforce so that you can apply online. Lawyers, apply online. We will come back and tell you online the status of your app. You don't have to call the phone center. But when you go to this site, what you're going to see is also an exemption section for all of your homeowners. Look at this. This person missed a homeowner exemption two years in a row, 500 a year, senior exemption over 65, 500 a year, senior freeze over 65, making under 65 grand a year. No, 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 no. We owe them three grand if in fact they were the owner. But this site will also tell you whether or not someone applied for one of these exemptions and when in the assessor's office. So let's go down here. This explains, and you can get all of this on cookcountytreasure.com. We just put it up here in case you don't know, for those of you who are lawyers and listening, you can get a homeowner's exemption. All of this reduces your tax, senior citizen over 65, freeze, under 65 grand a year and 65 disability exemptions. You may be blind. They'll take some money off. 
disabled veterans, returning from army, returning veterans, senior citizen deferral, got to apply by March. And what this does is this will give you five grand off of your tax, assuming that you're accepted into the program and you don't have to pay it until you die or the property sold. It's called spending your kids inheritance early. It is 6% interest a year. So those are the programs. Here's examples and we can give you this. These are homeowners if you put this in. So this is Jason Irvine's ward, okay? Here he is. This guy owes five grand. He's on the tax sale list. We owe him 700 and this are the missing exemptions. So you wanna put in the address and look for this stuff. Here's another example in the 24th Ward. And here on cookcountytreasure.com are all of these exemptions. So you can look up these exemptions by ward, municipality, township, and they will show up. Here, you download your tax bill. Don't wait for the United States Post Office to deliver anything because they might not. Here is our March bill. Look at this. Here we list to explain to people, and I'll, I'll explain this to you later, a little bit about debt disclosure. So people come in and complain, and your clients are going to complain about their bills. You're going to explain to them that this is the unfunded pension liability. Pension liability in the city of Chicago here is only funded by 22%. This is your August bill. Your August bill tells you where the money's going to and by percentage, one blue, one yellow. Okay, now you can download all of these bills. If you don't want me to ever mail you again, and I would love that, we email bills. You can sign up for e-billing. You can have that bill sent to you and to your client. Okay, so on debt and pension data, this is the info that you can find on the site. So this is the city of Chicago. As we said, this is the unfunded pension liability. But we added this, and this is for the city and all the suburbs. It's called employees versus retirees. There's 36,000 people working in the city of Chicago and 48,000 on pension, 11,000 more. Why do we have all this information up here? Because after 22 years, everybody calls and says, why is the bill going up? So we're giving them the info. This is the data that you can download. Let's say you live in the suburbs and you want to find out about the finances of Schomburg. You can punch this. Their financial report will show up because under this debt disclosure ordinance, they have to give us their financial statements. And these are the reports. So now we're moving on. This is the debt disclosure ordinance. Look at this summary. The debt on all governments from 2016 to four years later is up 20 billion. This chart, and you can download this off of cookcountytreasure.com. There's a little box on the left, you punch it. This shows the unfunded pension liability, okay? Red is below 50%. It's all the stuff on red here that you wanna look at, but you pull up your bill. It's got like 14 agencies on the left. All you do is then go here to see the financial viability. You should look at this if you're thinking about buying a house. You should look and see, is, is this place viable or not? Look at this, the city of Chicago. Look, look at where they are. They got to put in a billion two a year just for pension. These are unfunded and liabilities. Okay, so let's move on. Look at this. This is Chicago. This is all of Cook County, all 520. You got 217,000 people working, 173,000 retirees. So it's a rubber band. It's a rubber band that continues to get pulled. Let me pull up here. These, this is a list on cookcountytreasure.com under this, and I'm going to try and keep this presentation quick, so I'm running quickly, but this lists everybody that's working and everybody that's retired, and you're going to see that there's, the, that the number that are retired is going up and the number that are working is going down, which is kind of really scary. Okay, so now let's move on. This is the 
have a study. I am doing a series of studies. You need to watch them on cookcountytreasure.com. This one was really brilliant of my IT team. It's dedicated to Bruce Dole and John McCormick. Gets a property tax overview, put in your address, and look at that. You're going to see your 20-year history of how much the property taxes have gone up, how much they've gone up. So this is an interactive map. You can go to any of these wards. You might be wanting to move into Chicago and you say, you know what, let me find out what's going on in my ward. Go to cookcountytreasure.com. You punch on the 27th ward. You see that taxes, commercial and residential have gone up 322%. Let's look at the suburbs. How about this? Winnetka, Winnetka, big time school district, New Trier. They're up 116% over a 20 year period. So what's the conclusion of the study? The county's up 99% commercial and residential. The city's up 115 commercial and residential and suburban Cook County's up 87. Let's look at this. What happened? What we're saying in the study is you've gone up this much, but wages have gone up 57% and cost of living's only up 36%. You wanna understand why people are calling you to complain. Now let's look at, we divided this into quadrants. We've got all 50 Chicago wards here, all 50 Chicago wards, okay? And in all 50 wards, we're gonna break it down by residential and commercial for all the suburbs, residential and commercial, just for the sake of being really smart. The IT team put this together. They put the top 50 wards in on all properties. Pat Dow, 433%, Burnett, 322. And you can go down depending upon where you live. Okay, let's move on here. These are the 127 villages. I think I said 126 earlier. I'm gonna correct myself, all right? So these are the villages. Look at this, Markham's up 158%. Lamont's up 157. So now we, those are all 127. I'm running through them. These are the increases in just residential increases in Chicago alone. Look at Pat Dow's word on residential, 863%. Vernon Riley, 438. Okay, so now we're going to go to suburbs. Madison's the highest. Phoenix is second. That's all residential. Now we're going to do commercial. Commercial over 20 years in Cook County has gone up 1.5 billion and commercial in the suburbs, it's up one six. We're gonna quickly go through these Chicago wards to show you that Burnett is highest in commercial, third ward is highest, is second highest, and so on down. Let's take a look at the suburbs. Wow, Country Club Hills is up there competing with Glenview second, all the suburbs quickly. What are we gonna find out here? These are the home rule units in Cook County. We list them for you. There's 476 non-home rule. Home rule can do what they want. So they increased between 06 and 2019 property taxes by a billion four and non-home rule had to go to the voters. And there's wonderful charts about this, how they had to go to the voters. So, yeah. that's my phone ringing and I can't find it. So, why, why is that important? Look here. In, in this 20-year study, 176 times bond issues passed to the tune of $4 billion. Okay? Look at this. This is a, this is a bond issue in Stickney Township a bond issue in Stickney Township for 45 million. So what happens? 17,000 people are registered to vote. That's about half, 25% of the people who could have voted are voting here. And look what happens. 2,600 people vote, yes, it passes without 75% of the people voting. This 45 million goes into the property tax increase. So, why do we have this chart up here? So I want everybody to listen up. You should put this on your website because this is what's driving everybody crazy. 
This is the city of Chicago. This is suburban Cook County. How about this? Look at this. City of Chicago. About 75% of the people don't register and vote. Same thing in suburban Cook County. About 75% of the people don't vote. Those are the same 75% of the people who call your office and complain about why their taxes are going up or their water bills off or Comcast or whatever. They don't get involved, but they're involved enough to come in and complain. So the message is, you got to vote. You got to vote. We're going on here. This is the next PAPA study dedicated to Dolden McCormick. Okay, this is the 20 year study. It is called the top 50 study. It's a great little study because it goes through and it tells you, look at this. This is, and we started with, we just wanted to show you how dramatic this is. In Chicago, the top five Chicago residential increases over a 20 year period. Get this, East Lakeshore Drive. In 2000, it was six grand and today it is 133,000. That's without the assessments. So if you go to the internet and you look at Astor Street or you look at East Lakeshore Drive or you look at a lot of buildings on the lakefront, you're going to see, if you're also on the MLS, lots of stuff for sale, okay? And you're gonna see a lot of people listing this for sale because Who's going to take that house on East Lakeshore Drive and will it to their kids who are making 80 grand a year when it's going to cost them 250,000 with no mortgage to live there? Okay, so let's take a look here. These are additional increases and it's not just Lakeshore Drive. Look at this. This is La Spada's Ward. It was $516. Now it's 9,000. So you ought to go through this. We're going to look at the residential increases. Look here, Mary Street, okay, in Winnetka, okay? It was 16,000, it's up to 134,000, okay? Big, 53,000 up to 675,000 on Arnsley Road in Winnetka, all right? So now let's look at residential increases. This is the top 50 of residential. There's the East Lakeshore Drive. That's up $127,000. And we list this for you. We're not gonna go through every list, but we wanna show you suburban Cook County. Look at this, Winnetka and the highest one. Winnetka, Wilmette, Winnetka, Glencoe, okay? No. Commercial increases in Chicago. This, we give this to you by ward. So this is Brendan Riley's ward. If you're gonna live in 42, you wanna know what's happening there. You wanna know what percentage of the tax bills people are picking up. All the real estate lawyers should be very interested in this. This ends Brendan Riley. Let's look at commercial. This is all commercial and commercial increases in suburban Cook County. And these are residences in Chicago and how they went up. This is the third ward. We do this by ward. This is all on the internet at cookcountytreasure.com. So now all the other wards you can find there and the commercial increases you can find there as well. This is Chicago. This is Walter Burnett's commercial ward. This includes the West Loop. Look at this. 400,000 in the year, 2,000, it's up to 2 million. So people are coming to this site and they're looking at this. The rest of the wards on cookcountytreasure.com now we're going into my scavenger sale. Scavenger sale is the every two year sale of stuff that doesn't get sold on the one year tax sale when I talked about the auction. So all of this has been stayed due to COVID. Mike Madigan helped us with legislation in Springfield. The tax sale was supposed to be May 8th. It's indefinitely postponed. Why would we give you scavenger information? Look at this. It's 145,000 different times that something comes up, but we analyzed it and it's really 51,000 pieces that like nobody wants or rarely wants. So what are they? They are 25,000 vacant lots, 21,000 residential and 4,500 commercial industrial properties. What happens to this stuff? Look at this. This shows you by breakdown where it is. Green is African-American, purple is Hispanic. This shows you what kind. Is it commercial, residential, vacant? This is what's on 
the scavenger list, okay? This is what's in the suburbs by commercial residential vacant, okay? Now, look at this. This is 7,200 properties that have been on this list for 20 years. This is called Nobody Wants Them. So we tried to figure out why nobody wants them. Here's what's in the African-American wards. These 18 wards have these many properties. Stephanie Coleman's the highest, Jeanette Taylor. You wanna talk about Black Houses Matter again. These are black scavenger sale properties. These are the Hispanic properties. And you can see this number increasing in Susan Garza's ward, the 10th ward, South Side. So this shows you the breakdown by Hispanic and African-American, breakdown by Hispanic and African-American suburbs. But look at this. This shows you in the suburbs where the properties are and the population exit. Look at these exits, 18% exit between 2000 and 2018 in Harvey. These are all the exits. Robbins, 25% exit, okay? Now watch, these are the top 13 wards in the city where 20,000 of the 25,000 in the city, these properties exist. But look, that's where the violent crime in Chicago is. So what we're seeing is, and then the remaining wards are here, what we're seeing in the city is in these top 13 wards, 50% of the violent crime occurs, which is murder, rape, robbery and aggravated assault. So what are we saying? We're saying, look, this land's being vacated. People are getting out of here. The crime's out of control. We don't have the crime statistics for the suburbs, but we can show you the number of violent crimes by ward. And the most interesting slide here is this one. This is city of Chicago. This is the Chicago Police Department uh, Guys who put this together, look at this. In 2020, under the age of 12, 14 killed, 13 to 19, 89 killed. So what we think is happening, what we think is happening is people are saying, you know what? I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving. And finally, these are the violent crimes by year. These are the violent crimes of the year. Chicago accounts for slightly more than 50% of the population in Cook County, but 86% of violent crime since 2015, according to the FBI. That's scary. And you all know what's going on with these carjackings now and looting and robberies. So, I mean, that kind of ends, uh, uh, that was what I would call a quickie presentation on all of Pappas' studies how to get through the website and how to navigate what you're doing. I see in chat, we've got some Q and A's and we're gonna take those now. Let's see, do you need a better mousetrap? Yes. <laughs> do you have to be a lawyer to apply for an exemption or refund? No, no, we don't want, we, we, want, we want seniors and homeowners to come and get it. You're gonna get all these letters in the mail that say, you know, I know you've got money someplace or let me help you do this or that. And we take 40% sign here. You don't need anybody. You can do this on your own. You can do this for anybody that you know at all. You can do this for them. So there's questions some, and comments. There's some other questions too in the uh, Q&A box. You see those, Ms. Pappas? Okay, let's do Q&A. Does the Cook County Land Bank Authority work with the treasurer's office on some of these programs? The answer is no, we don't. We are separate entities. Um, they come in and buy stuff at our scavenger sale, but no, the answer to that is no. Do you have to be a lawyer to apply for exemptions? No, you have to be a homeowner to apply. You can go back four years. And what is the best email address to obtain help from your office is legal inquiry at cookcountytreasurer.com. Legal inquiry at cookcountytreasure.com. And Kelly and Anastasia are telling me that we respond within three business days. Three business days. Three business days, but usually less. 
Madam Treasurer, can we go back to something you just said? Sure. Just, um, because I was um, texted this question as well about how far back you can go. I, I want to make sure everyone heard what your response was to that. 20 years on refunds, assuming you own the property, and four years on exemptions, assuming you own the property. But let's say three years ago or a year ago, your mother died and you inherited the property. If you're in the will as inheriting the property and she didn't get it, she's owed a refund or an exemption, you can submit that paperwork to the office and the estate will get the money. Uh, here's an, do you see this other question? Any sense of when the 2017 annual sale will be held? We, it's, it's written in the legislation that it will be held when Pritzker lifts his executive order. But by the time they, you know, that order's not, I don't see that order being lifted soon. And once they lift it, we've got to publish and this and that. So I don't see a scavenger tax or tax sale being held for quite some time. I mean, they're going to have to get the whole world vaccinated. They can't even tell everybody, go get vaccinated, go vaccinated. There's no place to get vaccinated. There's not enough vaccines. I mean, we get calls about that in the call center. Where do I go to get vaccinated? I mean, people are just despondent because they can't get through it anywhere. Anonymous attendee. What is the email address? We gave you that. All right. Any more questions? Let's see. I would encourage you, uh, law firm, non-law firm, paralegal, whatever, to go to um, to go to CookCountyTreasure.com. I mean, we spent 22 years putting together, you know, millions of bits of data. And it's, it's all there available to you. You don't have to come in here. We used to have lawyers come in here and send their clerks in here. They don't come in anymore. They don't have to come in because we are more expedient and better at what we do online. When we get a million people a month coming in and your clients who may be Hispanic, Russian, Bulgarian, Ukrainian are coming in and getting the info uh, about exemptions online it just makes life easier. I mean, I don't know if this keeps going. I mean, we're going to get down to 40 people in here. I mean, we're just, you know, <laughs> we probably will, will keep everyone because we're programming more and doing less customer service, but we're also off the counter and Pappas Mobile into the community. So my best guess is in four years, we'll still have 50 people, but you know, and that's pretty good. We had 258 and most of the people in here are not just, you know, move this piece of paper here and there. They are pivotal Excel talented. Uh, many of them are trained in Tableau, they're programmers, they're project managers. So, so, you know, we're bringing in a guy next week, I think who's an attorney and a certified CPA. So I don't have to do a lot of talking to him. I mean, he just fits in because he goes from one of the four groups in here, which is customer service, legal, IT, and uh, accounting, finance. Uh, Madam Treasurer, another um, question has come in. Do you have a sense as to whether the due date for the first installment will get extended? Yeah, I should have answered that. That was probably on a slide where I was going through so quickly. I move faster than myself. The March 1st due date has already been extended two months to May 3rd. And the August 1st due date is gonna be October 1st. So Preckwinkle and County Board, okay, sponsored by Daly and Company, extended the, the, the due date with no penalty through May 1st. This bill that's out and this bill that's out is already up on the internet. You're gonna get it in the mail, but if you, you know, if you're a snowbird, you want to pay it now, you can. All right. Lots of people want to pay early because they leave the state um, in January. So two months, no penalty in March. Two months, no penalty in August. Any more questions for Treasurer Pappas? Well, not seeing any All more. All right, record there. time. All right. So um, I have to tell you, Madam Treasurer, Without a doubt, 
listening to your presentation, and now this is my second time having heard it, if, if your blood isn't flowing and you're not feeling invigorated about Cook County taxes, then you're not alive. Oh. Thank you. This is Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice weekend. Don't get, you know, in the way of these 13 year olds. <laughs> Before you go, everyone, please let me invite you to our next, our second public webinar. It's February 18th, same time, 2 to 3.30 p.m. It's entitled, GoFundMe Cannot Replace Wills, Trust, and Estate Planning. What you need to know to protect your family and your assets. So on behalf of the Chicago Bar Association, Madam Treasurer, I thank you and your staff. You. I thank everyone for attending. Have a prosperous, happy, safe, and healthy weekend. Thank you very much. See you online. Don't come in the office. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>